JRay 501. I'm in the World Socialist website, WSWS.org. And this article is actually dated March 17th, but I think it does have some information that I, for one, was not completely aware of. Japan's TEPCO, a history of nuclear disaster cover-ups. Tokyo Electric Power Company is the conglomerate at the center of Japan's nuclear radiation emergency at Fukushima. Its operations over the past several decades epitomized the government-backed pursuit of corporate profit at the direct expense of lives, health, and safety. TEPCO is the largest power company in the world and the biggest in Asia, or I mean fourth largest power company in the world and the biggest in Asia operating 17 nuclear reactors and supplying one-third of Japan's electricity. It has a long documented history of serious safety breaches, systemic cover-ups, potentially fatal disasters, persecution of whistleblowers, suppression of popular opposition, and use of its economic and advertising clout to silence criticism. Among the company's record of more than 200 proven falsifications of safety inspection reports are several relating to the stricken Fukushima Daiichi facility itself. In 2002, TEPCO admitted to falsifying reports about cracks that had been detected in core shrouds at reactors number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 as far back as 1993. The current crisis of Fukushima caused by last Friday's magnitude 9 earthquake is not the company's first quake-related breakdown. In 2007, a much smaller 6.8 magnitude tremor caused a fire and a radiation leak that shut down TEPCO 7 reactor Kashiwazaki Kairiwa nuclear plant, the world's biggest. The company later admitted that the plant had not been built to withstand such shocks. TEPCO's record is a case study in the complicity of successive Japanese governments and regulatory agencies over the past 40 years in the safety failures of nuclear power companies. With the backing of the Liberal Democratic Party, which ruled Japan virtually continuously from 1955 when it was formed to 2009, the business elite aggressively pursued the construction of more than 50 nuclear plants over the objections of residents and environmentalists in order to secure the energy needs of Japanese capitalism, despite the patent dangers of doing so in one of the world's most earthquake-prone zones. The known nuclear cover-ups, undoubtedly just the tip of the iceberg, began to emerge in 1995. In that year, an official falsification of the extent of a sodium leak and fire at the Japan Atomic Energy Agency's Manju Fast Breeder Reactor caused public outrage. It was revealed that Power Reactor and Nuclear Fuel Development Corporation, the agency then in charge of Manju, had altered reports edited a videotape taken immediately after the accident and issued a gag order to the employees. After a long series of court battles, the government allowed the reactor to restart last year. In 1999, one of Japan's worst nuclear accidents occurred at the Tokamura uranium processing plant, 120 kilometers north of Tokyo. An uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction at the plant operated by JCO, a subsidiary of Sumitomo Metal Mining, killed two employees and leaked radioactivity over the countryside. Fifty-five workers were exposed to radiation and 300,000 people ordered to stay indoors after the circumvention of safety standards caused a leak. Government officials later said safety equipment at the plant had been missing. Three years later, TEPCO was exposed as falsifying safety data, including at the aging Fukushima Daiichi facility. Initially, the company admitted 29 cases of falsification. Eventually, however, it admitted to 200 occasions over more than two decades between 1977 and 2002 involving the submission of false technical data to authorities. According to the Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency, TEPCO had admitted to hide cracks in reactor vessel shrouds in 13 units, including Fukushima Daiichi, six reactors, Fukushima Daiani, four reactors, and Kashiwazaki Kariwa, seven reactors. 
Tepco's wrongdoings were only revealed as a result of whistleblowing by a former engineer at General Electric, a company with close connections to Tepco. GE built the plants and has been contracted by Tepco to carry out inspection and operational matters for decades. Two years earlier, the engineer had reported the safety frauds to the relevant ministry, MIDI, the forerunner of the current Ministry of um, Economy, Trade and Industry, only have only half the government supply his name to TEPCO and conspire with the company to bury the information. Hitachi, which conducted the air tightness checks for TEPCO, was also implicated in the manipulation of test results. On two occasions, the pressure readings in Fukushima's number one reactor were unstable, so workers were instructed to inject air into the container to make it appear that pressure was being maintained. Nevertheless, relying on TEPCO's own calculations, NISA maintained that there should be no problem regarding the safety of the plants. The agency inspects nuclear plants only every 13 months and leaves the inspection of the shrouds and pumps around the reactor's cores to each company. The LDP government feigned concern at these blatant safety breaches with Seje Murat, Vice President, Minister for Economy, Trade and Industry declaring the company had betrayed the public's trust over nuclear energy. TEPCO's senior executives duly resigned and their successors formally pledged to take all necessary measures to prevent any further fraud. But by the end of 2005, generation had been restarted at all suspended plants with government approval. A little over a year later, in March 2007, the company announced that an internal investigation had revealed a large number of unreported incidences. These included an unexpected unit criticality in 1978 and an additional systematic false reporting, which had not been uncovered in 2002. Once more, the firm was publicly remorseful. We apologized from the bottom of our heart for causing anxiety to the public and local residents but the company was permitted to keep operating. Several months later, in July 2007, the 6.8 quake that shut down TEPCO's Kawakashi-Wazaki Karawa nuclear plant demonstrated the real nature of the company's assurances. The earthquake, 10 kilometers offshore from the Honshu West Coast plant, caused subsidence of the main structure, ruptured water pipes, started a fire that took five hours to extinguish, and triggered radioactive discharges into the atmosphere and sea. The company initially said there was no release of radiation, but admitted later that the quake had released radiation and had spilled radioactive water into the Sea of Japan. Seismologist Katsuhiko Ishibashi warned that had been the epicenter been 10 kilometers to the southwest at a magnitude 7, the city would have experienced a major emergency. Amid a public outcry, the government again put on a display of anger. A display of anger. The 2007 disclosure of TEPCO's largest nuclear plant contributed to the company posting its first ever losses over the past two years. Okay, so <clears throat> They had to do something. The current meltdown and radiation emergency at Fukushima is the inevitable product of the protracted record of TEPCO government collaboration, which is being continued by the present Democratic Party of Japan administration. Prime Minister Naoto Kan, like his LDP predecessors, has publicly professed outrage at TEPCO's repeated cover-ups in this latest and by far the most serious disaster. Reuters reported Japan's Prime Minister was furious with executives at a power company at the center of the nuclear crisis for taking so long to inform his office about a blast at its stricken reactor complex demanding what the hell is going on. Yeah. Of course, he's got to save face and look like he gives a shit. With the government's backing, TEPCO also remains closely interlocked with other Japanese companies. Just weeks ago, on February 23rd, TEPCO and Mitsubishi Corporation formed a partnership to take over the management of Electricity Generating, generating Public Company Limited, one of the largest power companies in Thailand. The company's recent expansion extends to the U.S., and in May 2010, TEPCO announced an agreement for the planned enlargement of the South Texas Project 
nuclear plant in partnership with Nuclear Innovation North America, LLC, a nuclear development company jointly owned by the NRG Energy Inc. and Toshiba. Within Japan, TEPCO is planning to open six new reactors, including Units 7 and 8 of the Fukushima Daiichi plant in 2014 and 2015, and Units 1 and 2 of the Higashidori plant facing the Pacific Ocean in northern Japan in 2015 and 18. Last month, residents protested as the company commenced construction in the dark of night on two nuclear plants at Iowa Island in the inland sea of Honshu, Japan's main island, and close to Kyushu Island, where a volcano burst this week. Scenes of the Iowa Island Iowa Island were broadcast on the Australian Broadcasting Corporation 730 television program March 15th. The footage was recorded by documentary filmmaker Hitomo Kamanaka, who resigned from the state broadcaster NHK after it refused to run her material criticizing the country's nuclear power companies. TEPCO has been shielded by governments and the media for decades because, as the World Socialist website has pointed out, the implications of the Japanese catastrophe, the Japanese ruling elite turned to the breakneck development of nuclear power in the late 1960s and the early 70s to shield itself from dependence on imported oil. Now, more than 40 years old, TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi plant was the very first to begin operational generation on March 26, 1970. TEPCO's litany of deliberate violations of the most elementary safety standards enabled by the collusion of one government after another is a graphic demonstration of the intolerable danger posed to the world's population by the capitalist economic order itself based as it is on the extraction of private profit at all costs. This is